Hello and welcome from the Akrana CyberFit Summit in Abu Dhabi. We have with us today Mr. Ronan. He is the Vice President for the Northern Region of Europe for Akronis. How are you, Mr. Ronan? Yeah, I'm good, Yasan. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. No problem. Uh, Mr. Ronan, I want to start with you with a general question. Uh, how do you see data? How do you, wh what's your idea of data? Uh, data, well, uh, I, I tell a story back in 2003 that I had a lot of data on my laptop, you know, my personal data, my music, my files, my folders, spreadsheets, things like that. And around 2003, when, we, when I started to use cloud technologies a lot more, uh, I probably wasn't too concerned about data because it was all local to me. It was all on my laptop and I had a copy of that data. But I think data... It exploded around that time. I started to use cloud storage, apps on my iPhone, um, other applications as well. And my data suddenly went from being local to me on my device to being everywhere, to being in the internet, to being on my watch, to being in my car, even on my washing machine. As I said this morning, you know, you have data on your washing machine. So your data is now everywhere. It's all over the place and it's hard to control, but it's still vital to you. It, you still need your data to operate uh, items or access things that are important to you on a daily basis. And at Acrona, we believe that that data needs protecting. And that's why we're bringing our messaging to the world. Uh, some might say that uh, having your data outside of your organization or even outside your home uh, is not safe. They, they still think it's on the cloud, it's somewhere else, and it's uh, more susceptible to other threats. So mm. what do you think of this? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I mean, I think the cloud is the wrong name for the cloud. I think it should be called the safe or something like that, because I think your data is actually generally, anyway, very safe in the cloud. And um, it's very, it's much easier to hack somebody who has data at home than has data in the cloud. You have to get through so many layers of security when you're accessing data in the cloud. And, and therefore, it's, it's generally a lot safer. I think the other thing that people don't think about is that when, we, when we're running a laptop locally, for example, we don't keep the software up to date. We don't patch the actual software that we're using. Um, whereas in the cloud, um, most of the time, the actual applications and the software and the networking and the firewalls, et cetera, are kept up to date all the time. So I'm a cloud advocate. I would always put my data in the cloud because I believe it's a lot safer in the cloud than it is sitting on a laptop at home. And how Acronis uh, helps in this uh, field? Well, I think, uh, I think we, help, we help in a number of ways. We offer solutions that make cloud, um, and we don't, we don't tell people where to store their data, by the way. We're happy that they want to store it locally. Uh, they can store it in the cloud. We just make it easy, easy to store wherever you want to store it, whether it's in a, a NAS device in, in Abu Dhabi or in a data center in London or in a, you know, on, a, on a server in, in, in China. We don't, we don't care where you store your data. We just keep, make it easy for you to actually store your data. Where you, where you want. We have, we have things called storage gateways, which allow easy access to data. So as long as it has an IP address and storage at the back end of it, then basically we can store it there for you. Uh, what are the challenges for the digital, digital transformation and moving to the cloud? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, there, there are lots of tools out there that help you move to the cloud today. If you want to move your mail servers, for example, there's a lot of uh, migration tools that allow you to do that and, and do that very, very easily. Um, so I, I don't think, I think the challenge around the cloud is mainly the perception that it's not secure, um, but it's, it's generally a lot easier and a lot safer to have your data and, and your applications. You know, Microsoft have done a lot of work lately on, on making sure it's easy to migrate your workloads to their cloud. And, um, you know, in Acronis, as I said, we don't tell you where to store your data. But we think it's um, we think we, we give you the option to store it where where you want to. I think digital transformation. The big the big challenge these days around digital transformation is is it's it it, it it's it's not having control. And um, you know if you have your data on a, an IoT device uh, or have it on a on a on a laptop or a workstation remotely, it's just about making sure that you actually consider uh, protecting those devices and using using Acronis to actually protect those devices. devices. Uh, do you have an example of uh, a malicious attack that happened because of those uh, Internet of Things uh, devices? Yeah, I've got lots. Um, so I think, uh, you know, some, some good ones uh, for you. Some, I mean, obviously, phishing emails are the most obvious one. 
Um, and I think the thing that, that, that strikes me about phishing emails these, these days is that they're using artificial intelligence against us. They're learning about you, they're learning about me. They're, they're, they're making very personal emails and sending us that information personally to, to try and get us to kind of click on the wrong link or download some, some software that we shouldn't download. Um, I've heard some good examples recently where they, they mimicked some websites. Uh, they sent you an email to say that, you know, you want your interest in this product, please click on our email and, uh, and basically buy the product from this website. And it mimicked that website and then fundamentally took you, it took, they completed the transaction at that, at that website. Uh, so it made it look as if the actual transaction was real, but they had your details in the back end. Um, you, you hear things like uh, going into a coffee shop and, and, uh, and downloading uh, or connecting to the Wi-Fi and having a script downloaded that basically uses your laptop to mine cryptocurrencies for uh, cyber criminals. So um, there's, there's varying degrees of, of kind of, of maliciousness. Um, the worst probably is ransomware. And ransomware is, is on the increase. Ransomware started in 1999. It started on a floppy disk in 1999, and by ransomware standards, it wasn't it wasn't uh, successful. It needed two things: it needed the internet and it needed cryptocurrencies. And what we've seen since 2014, uh, the internet obviously was in its infancy in 1999. But what we've seen since 2014 is an explosion of ransomware families. And the reason that is is you've got cyber criminals at the front end with with developers at the back end, finding new ways of actually going out and attacking organizations. And these families are changing every single day. Um, and the reason that ransomware is so important uh, as a threat to us is because of the economic incentive. People can make money out of ransomware. And once you add money into the mix, then, then basically it becomes very enticing. So you have, say, you have web, web, websites out there today that you can just have an email address. You don't have to have any uh, IT knowledge whatsoever. And you can download a, a Java applet, for example, and basically just basically have an email address and go and attack organizations and all you need is an email address, no IT skills. And they will give you 30 to 40% of what funds they actually generate from those organizations. So it's a different type of threat that we're facing today with ransomware. And uh, it's, 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 as I said, it's exploding. Um, and they're being even more malicious because they're, they're injecting themselves into backups. Our competitors would say that backups are the best form of protection against, against ransomware. But the reality is there are ransomware strains out there that are actually going after backup technologies or backups themselves. And the problem is you go and you, 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 when you need your backup, when you're at your most vulnerable, you go to your backup, you open your backup, and guess what? You've got a ransomware strain in your backup. And that's how uh, clear thinking or malevolent they, they can be in actually attacking your backups and your, and your data. So it's a, it's a real, real threat for us today. So speaking of that, if you, you can't... Uh trust having just the backup data. So wh what's the solution for that? Well, we, we, we have, we, we have a belief in, 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 in our five vectors of, of data of cyber protection. And um, cyber protection, just for those of you that don't know, is the, it's the merging of data protection with cyber security. Uh, I think everybody knows what data protection is. It's having a backup. It's having a copy of your backup. And cyber security is having uh, endpoint protection around your laptops or on your servers. But um, uh, we, we have five vectors that we look at. We have safety, which is having a copy of your data, but not necessarily just having a copy of your data locally, it's having a copy of your data off-site. Um, we have a three, two, one rule of backup in Acronis, have three copies of your data, have it on two different media, and have at least one copy off-site. Then there's accessibility, having access to that data. It's okay, it's great to have a copy of that data, but you need to be able to recover it. Um, and accessibility, as data has exploded over the last number of years, accessibility has become more important because we don't want to recover all our data. We only want to recover little bits of our data or a single mail or a mailbox or a database instant, for example. So you have uh, accessibility has had to evolve too. Then you've got privacy. You've got to consider privacy. Um, you've got to consider who has access to your data. Should they have access to your data? Have you given them permission to have access to your data? Very importantly. And that's very, very hard to do if you think about it. all the applications that we have, what consent have we given for people to have access to our data? So it's very, very difficult. The one I'm really excited about um, is authenticity. Authenticity is, is really important. Data is very fragile. It can be easily amended. You know, we've got, it's just ones and zeros. Um, you know, we, we have examples in Acronis where partners have received invoices in and the data has been manipulated on the invoice to change the bank account details. 
and they've paid the actual, uh, paid into the wrong bank account. So authenticity of data is really, really important going, going forward. I'm sure if you look at any laptop in the world, it's got multiple copies of files. How do you prove what was the original file? And when you send an email to somebody or your colleagues and they send another email on or they amend a the file and send it back to you, how do we prove where the original file lay? And Acronis has, introdu has introduced Notary, and Notary is basically blockchain using blockchain technologies to verify that data hasn't changed. It timestamps that data and then shows the track changes uh, beyond the timestamp. And that's really, really important because we're, we're going to have, um, I think, an explosion in, in, in the requirements around Notary for, for industries that are heavily compliant, like pharmaceutical industries or financial industries that have to prove that they've, they have the original data and that, it, that it's been tracked as well. Another good example of that is when you have, um, when you, when you have a, an attack or you have a data breach and you want to recover a, a backup, how do you know that backup hasn't been tampered with? If you use Notary, it'll tell you that the actual backup hasn't been changed. And that's really, really unique. Um, and then the final one is, is, is security. And we all know why we need security. So we look at, we look at cyber protection as encompassing those five vectors. Safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security. And you need to consider all of those when you're protecting data. Uh, to be honest, implementing all these factors uh, will not be an easy task. So how, how do you get the right people to do all this work, this complicated work? Well, the first thing you do is you engage with the Cronus and uh, you look at their solutions because uh, well, our solutions, uh, I, they, they're, they're born with that, they're bred with that kind of technology and those five vectors within them. You're right, it's not easy. Um, uh, you know, as our, we, have, we have a slide this morning, for example, that talked about uh, cost and complexity and security. And complexity of data has grown significantly over the years. Uh, we've seen, you know, we have, we, we, we reckon there's going to be 200 petabyte, sorry, 200 billion wow. devices in the next four to five years. So it's a huge amount of growth in devices that we're going to see. Um, Security has increased, as, as, as we said, and, and, and cost has increased around all this. So it, it, it isn't an easy job. And, and we've got professionals that you can engage with that will give you advice around all of this. But also, um, you know, we, we, we do believe that the SAPAS messaging, safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security, if you think about it, they actually fight against each other a little bit. You can't have multiple copies of data and not consider your privacy and not consider accessibility. You can't have multiple copies of your data and you know, you've got to be secure. These things are fighting against each other. It's a balancing act between everything. And with the Cronus solutions, you can use our solutions to give you that balance in your organization. But to me, it's really about engaging with a, a good consultant that can actually advise you around all of this. And uh, in Acronis, how do you make sure that the people you hire or work with Acronis are capable of doing all this uh, kind of work? Yeah, it's a good question. When I, when I hire people, I, I always go on personal recommendation. I, I always ask my team first and foremost who they worked with in the past. Because I think, as you probably know, when you work with somebody, you get to know them probably better than your wife. <laughs> or your husband, you know, it's, it's very, uh, you, you work very closely during the day. And um, if we can get a recommendation from somebody personally, I, I think that's the best way of recruiting people. But out, out, outside of that, we're looking for some key traits in Acronis, you know, when we hire people. I always look for a positive attitude, you know. Um, I like people who are high energy as well. Um, we call that you know, high frequency in Acronis. In Acronis, we're, we're, we're in a hyper growth environment. You know, we've grown 30% last year, 40% this year. Um, you know, we're, we need people who can actually handle a lot of things, juggle a lot of balls, and it's 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 very demanding. But um, we've got some great people who can actually do many things at the same time. So they're key traits for us. But passion for technology is also one of them for me. They have to be passionate about what they're doing because we believe in Acronis. We're making a difference, and we're making a difference to our partners. We're making a difference to our end customers uh, with our solutions. I really believe that. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't believe that actually. Acronis technology is going to make a difference to people. We've already stopped 500,000 ransomware attacks this year alone. So um, we believe we're saving, saving a lot of people's data, saving their businesses and saving their reputation. Um, but we also have an induction program when you join Acronis. You learn about the products. You learn about our messaging. I think our messaging is really important because I think it is thought leadership. And we repeat, rinse and repeat is, is the thing we do. You learn, you learn once. You learn again, you keep learning, you keep refining your messaging, 
and uh, and ultimately you kind of learn about all the economic technology and, and, and the mess unit at the same time. You just told me you, you serve reputation and you serve a lot of companies. Uh, can you tell us a story about that? Yeah, um, we've got a good example of a, of a partner we work with. Um, one of the engineers was uh, was working on a, um, a personal project at home and he was downloading a PDF of a washing machine, would you believe, of all things. And within that PDF, there was actually a ransomware. Um, and that, that actually got into the company network and actually encrypted 72,000 files. It took them nearly a week to actually recover all the data. So that's the kind of situation where we can actually help companies because our active protection is constantly monitoring the environment, the network, the individual PC. It sits as a service on a, on a, on a laptop and actually learns a, learns a bit about you, learns a bit about what you do on a daily basis with your data. Uh, it looks for ransomware, it looks for crypto jacking, and it says it, it flags unusual activity. And, and that's important because if we can get to that level of personalization, it's, it's, it's really important to protect our data. And one of the things I don't like about the IT industry, we're very reactive. We're very good at detecting things when they happen and responding to that. But what we don't do is prevent very well. Um, we use an analogy of, you know, a thief breaks into your house. Um, it's great that you can detect a thief has broken into your house. And it's great that you can respond to that. But it's better to actually prevent the thief getting in the first place. And our technology is preventative first. It stops the thief getting into your house and stealing your data. So that's how we're helping organizations today. We're stopping the thief getting into your network and, and stealing your data or modifying your data and holding you to answer. I want to finish with one last question. Uh, do you have any advice for end users, for not organizations, for the individuals? How can they protect their own data? Yeah, well, first of all, download, go to, go to acronis.com and download the, the free version of our active protection that's on that website today because that will, that will ultimately help you with ransomware and crypto jacking. Um, I think the other bits of advice are don't click on anything that looks suspicious because if you think it looks suspicious, it probably is. Um, you know, beware of free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi is, is very dangerous. Um, your, your data is shared over that and anybody can actually, we have a, we have a, a, a chap that comes in and does, does, does examples of, of data theft with us. And literally within minutes, he can find out information on free Wi-Fi. He can find out your name, he can find out your mobile number, he can find out things like that, your email address. And once you start to get all of this data, you can actually be easily stolen from. So avoid free Wi-Fi, get a good VPN provider and uh, use VPN locally as well. And um, use Acronis to, to protect your data. That's, that's the other bit of advice I would use because I think we're the best provider of data protection and cyber protection services. We'll make sure to get that uh, downloaded as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, Mr. Ronan. No thank problem. You. Thanks, Yasser. Thank Cheers to that. Thanks. Thank so you. Much. Cheers.